Welcome everybody to our weekly Bright ID AMA call. Um, welcome to our community members. Um, welcome to those viewing on YouTube. Um, today's topic is fraud detection. And um, we would like to uh, make this a combined topic with the Gitcoin fraud detection team. But I actually don't see any of them here today. So we'll probably have a part two that involves Gitcoin. But we can talk about um, what we do with fraud detection, what other applications we know do for fraud detection, and some of the new developments. So um, yeah. So to lead into this, I think we had a um, on what was that Monday? I think it was we had a we had a um, an event between uh, it was like a a conversation and a um, a presentation with Gitcoin and and friends of Gitcoin about how we can improve civil detection in Gitcoin. And so that's kind of was kind of the prompt also the prompt for this AMA. Um, it's interesting what they're doing. Um, one of the most interesting things that I think so I mean they have a whole range of things that they're doing, which they'll probably talk about the next time that they come. Um, they uh, I mean they do a lot to keep out Sybils, and there's a lot that's very specific to Gitcoin. Um, analysis that they do uh, user behavior on Gitcoin that doesn't really necessarily carry over to other platforms. But then they also have this effort that is, um, they call it the proof of personhood passport. And um, they want that to be something that they can export. Uh, and so I wanted to talk about that more, like what would a proof of personhood passport look like? How could you use it? Um, so I think that's a that's an interesting topic, and we can get started with that. But this, as usual, is an AMA. Anyone can ask any questions they want. So um, you can type your questions into chat, or you can raise your hand, and we'll try to get to everybody. But talking about the um, the proof of personhood passport, um, what would that look like? So the way that I look at it and you can you can read what Kevin Owaki has said about it. I think he was the originator of the idea and um, Gitcoin has been thinking about how to build that. Um, the way I see it is you have like this public um, passport that doesn't necessarily reveal too much uh, in detail about yourself, but it's something that you kind of carry around with you in public and uh and it's got it's got stamps on it that represent um different verifications from different entities in the digital space um that can help to make you appear to be a unique person the idea is that if you have enough of these it's like uh it's proof it's proof that you've participated in a bunch of different places and you add all those together and it adds up to a unique person. So it's it's an interesting idea and I definitely support this type of um, um, experimentation and I would like to see it made. And so I'm helping to advise on that where I can and and uh, and yeah, help, help that to become a reality. But um, the way I see it being useful is um, so you can you can get these these stamps. So let's say that one stamp says that you're uh, a Gitcoin good that you have a Gitcoin account and that your Gitcoin account is in good standing. Another stamp might be that you're a participant in such and such DAO and that 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 um, that account is in good standing, etc. And so you collect a bunch of these and um, and then that's sort of like in the more of these that you have, the more it increases the likelihood that you're a unique person. And so then you share that with some new application or DAO that you're going to. And you say, look, you know, I'm I'm a good actor in all of these other systems. And um, 
and here's my press passport that proves that and it doesn't you know it doesn't reveal like which gitcoin user i am just reveals that i'm a good a gitcoin user in good standing um and then i share that with other application and, and that can that can be my ticket in or maybe give me a head start or a boost while using another app or give people some reason to to trust me um, in that app and and maybe maybe you could even make the case that it goes as far as proving that i'm probably a a unique person so anyways i think that's really interesting there's um there's a lot of uh privacy considerations to keep in mind to make sure that 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 it allows people to remain as private as they want want to be and still use this um use this passport unlike uh real passports that kind of like divulge too much information like a a, a country passport tends to have more information than you really want to share these are these can be a lot more private than that so anyways um does anyone else was anyone else there at the at the presentation or re has read about the the proof of personhood passports that has opinions on it um other interesting things they, that they know that they want to share about it let's just start there uh, i would so love I know. to attend that but but i but i have a question so uh, sure is it is it their plan with the proof pass proof of person pass wow i can't say that proof of personhood passport there we go uh that it doesn't disclose any of the any of the specifics of who you are on any of those platforms yeah so the first I've heard that it, i know that's how we think of things that's how i think of it and um i'm that how they're to, building it? <laughs> so i there there's no evidence that much of anything has been built yet and so i'm going to try to encourage strongly encourage uh our way of doing things which is that you don't have because you don't have to, i don't i think you can get everything you want without having to disclose which particular gitcoin user you are so at the at the presentation on monday we had this panel discussion and they were asking me about uh, about uh like well could we have a like a revocation list so gitcoin um revokes their stamp from you and and um and we were talking and i was talking about how we could um you can have those stamps expire and you can also have those stamps so that they don't show which uh gitcoin user you you are but what they can show um they can show things like um Okay, this is um, this is your first like with it's it's like with each with each expiration period, you can show whether or not you had a valid um, uh, like a valid stamp at that time. So, so anyone can like anyone can look at your history. And so if you have a spotty history uh, that shows that let's say you started out being in good standing and then like there were two periods where you no longer had that and then you got it back um there's uh there's like some some interesting things that can be revealed that way without revealing um your exact gitcoin account so presumably the reason you would want to share your exact gitcoin account is so that um someone looking at your passport could do further research um into your exact uh, Gitcoin account, but that has privacy issues. Like maybe you don't want to reveal which exact Gitcoin user you are. Maybe you don't want to link all these different accounts together on your passport and let everyone know that this Gitcoin user equals this DAO user. And so you want you want that privacy. And I think you can get all the benefits um, of doing that by allowing um, allowing gitcoin to kind of uh, when they issue that stamp to to have it mean what people would want to investigate to have it mean like that you're a good user you're not a civil attacker and then the absence of that kind of puts you into question it's like 
okay, why don't you have one of those? Why don't you have, um, you know, if you, or especially if you had one before, why don't you have one now? Those types of questions. Um, so yeah, so I, so I think, I think that would be the preferable, the better way to do it. But I, um, and that's the way that I will try to encourage them to do it. And if I need to kind of like show how that could be done, but, um, but yeah, I think it's, I think it's possible. Hey guys, come to here. Um, so I guess my question, uh, one of the questions that comes up is how are they, uh, how are you, how are they, I guess, verifying your identity? Is it really just your Gitcoin account? Okay, yeah, so that's that. all it is. That's that's the Gitcoin. That's the only stamp that they're responsible for. And what they can do is they can ensure, in the same way that Bright ID ensures that each verification is only given out to one person, they can ensure that each Gitcoin account only gets one stamp. Um, they they can use the same technique with, that we that we use to do that. Yeah, that way you can't. Um, so basically, what you're doing is you, the way I kind of envision it is your proof of personhood passport has a number that's publicly. It has a unique identifier or a number attached to it. So like this is passport A B C X Y Z one two three, and um, and that is public and unique. So uh, everyone knows that that pass that's that's the number of this passport, and um, and uh, and it has whatever stamps it has in it. And then when you go to Gitcoin or some other application or organization, you, what you do what you can do is similar to what we do in Bright ID. You can request a blind signature, and they can limit you to just one. So you can you can say, okay, please stamp my passport stamp it like i'm gonna in the in the like the blind signature example that david chom uses in his paper um you uh it, it's like an envelope with a little square cut out where you can put your stamp and so they don't see what they're stamping but they know that they're stamping a passport and so you say like okay please you know this is my passport that i need you to stamp and you you only get uh, they'll only stamp one per account, but they don't see which passport they're stamping. But then later you can you can like take it out of the wrapper and show okay they they stamp my passport like they they've said that this is um, that this is this is a, a valid um, like the holder of this passport has a valid um, Gitcoin account, and then you you collect a bunch of those. So does that kind of answer the question about that? Like what they're actually looking at when they stamp your passport? Yeah, I think it covers my question at least in terms of understanding like the, uh, the way that you would access that account uh, and more. Adam, I also wonder if, if they're gonna stamp it with different levels. So like in, in Aura, we're talking about having kind of like bronze, silver, and gold based on our confidence. Because some accounts are like, yeah, I guess that's probably a good account. And then they look at some of like like some of the people on this call have really clear, good, strong Gitcoin accounts. Gitcoin's very confident that's a good user. And there's other people that so it seems like there needs to be multiple levels. But when you do that, you start you start decreasing the anonymity set. You're like, oh, you're like, they're really good on Gitcoin and they're really good on Rabbit Hole and they're like questionable. I, so, I mean, I'm not an anonymity maximal, maximalist, but but it's something needs to be considered. Yeah, definitely. So I think that there's enough Git. There are enough Gitcoin users that you can you can divide the sets into levels, like you say. You just want to you want to make sure that it's like you say you don't you don't end up with like. Oh, I've got the super ultra high platinum level. Oh, but there's only two of us. So now I've basically, you know, practically revealed who I am. Um, whereas if I'm in the bucket of like 
good users, then maybe there's 10,000 of us. And so I don't reveal much by right. revealing that I'm in that group. Yeah, I think they should, I think they should definitely do that. Um, and do they know sense. that? Yeah. <laughs> like, here, like here we are, we're, we're sort here of like, we are like speculating. We're designing their system. <laughs> yes, and you should do that. And, yeah, and, and we're largely and no like, Right. No, but. Decisions that we've made. Right. Right, so we're kind of like mirroring the decisions that we've made because we think those are good decisions and we hope to share that information with Gitcoin. I think one of the takeaways from the meeting on Monday was that Bright ID has a lot of learnings to share with Gitcoin. Um, Gitcoin has a lot of learnings to share with Bright ID. Ceramic has a lot of learnings to share with Gitcoin and Bright ID. So I think those three um, um, entity or organizations are you know we we should be we should be sharing our best practices with each other and trying to figure out what those best practices are as far as privacy and um as far as like uh, achieving a high level of confidence for these um for these sorts of uh, verifications yeah so i'm um i i, I i'm looking forward to the the proof of person in passports, because I think it's, um, I mean, I think if it's, if it's done in the right way, it's something that is kind of like, um, like, I don't know how, how effective it will be um, compared to some of the things that we're working on Bright, with Bright ID as far as like proving uniqueness, but it, it proves something like you, like you it's it's a lot better than nothing i think if you show up to a dao and you're um kind of like you have a blank passport let's say that puts you in this camp where you you could be a civil attacker and that's why you have a blank passport or you could be like someone who's brand new and so you're kind of in that space then if you've got this detailed passport that's got a lot of nice stamps on it, then it puts you in this other space where you're a lot less likely to be a civil a attacker um, and uh, and you've got some sort of reputation or history of good behavior. And so it's like, it, it's it's a good way of, of, of kind of kicking things off for, for brand new users to, or like, brand new users to a DAO who may or may not have a history to kind of like ca help categorize them. And it's like, you don't have to take their word for it. You can use um, kind of their existing history. And it allows, if done right, it allows people to remain anonymous. So if I wanted, I could join a DAO completely anonymous, but I could, I could tell people like, hey, you know, I don't want to reveal which participant I have been in these other DAOs but I have been a participant in these other DAOs. Yeah. And that, that says something. Clarification. Yep. When I show my passport someplace new, do they see all my stamps or do I control which stamps they see? The way I see it, um, they see all your stamps, um, but it doesn't have to be that way. Um, so I, I think, um, I mean, it, it's so, it's like I, I think you should be able to selectively reveal. Um, I, I may, maybe the case for that is if if you start to think like, wow, I've got so many stamps, um, or or let's say you got okay. So here's here's an interesting case. So let's say you got a stamp that was that you th you're embarrassed about or something. <laughs> like well, and I don't want them to know that I was in that. Not even, not even embarrassed. So. For example, you know, and I've disclosed on these calls before, right? So, like, I'm I'm in the Lao, and and all member and, and all all members of 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 the of the Lao, uh, you know, are uh, have have some some level of level of wealth, or they wouldn't or they wouldn't be members. I might not want to walk into a new situation having that like shown. Uh, I, I don't, it's not. I'm not embarrassed. I'm very proud to be part of Lao, but. But there are plenty of contexts where I don't I don't want to walk in and and and, sh and and show that. Yeah. So the thing that makes that tricky, I mean, I th I think it probably is possible. The thing that makes it tricky is the um, 
the transferability of of uh, of proofs or knowledge. So let's say that I prove to Dow A, because like I said, your passport number is like out in the open. And so if I if I show my passport and I show all my stamps to um, like Dow A, and then I want to go to Dow B and just show half of my stamps, Dow A could uh, potentially say like, okay, like this person showed us something else. Like they showed us more information and here it is because they showed it to us. So um, there, there are ways to uh, protect against that. Um, uh, like there's, there, there's different signature schemes that can selectively reveal things. Uh, there's like BBS plus um, signature scheme that can do that. So um, maybe, I guess maybe there, there's not too many like real world cases of that being used yet. Um, so I don't know like the practical concerns for that, but in theory, you could do that. You could make it so that, um, yeah, you can, you can reveal your passport to Dow A, but you can say like, okay, I'm revealing it just to you in a way that like you cannot, uh, like you cannot um, reveal this to Dow B um, in, in a convincing way. Like it, it would not, um, it would not carry the same proof value as if I revealed it directly to them. Um, so that's, that, that non-transferability of proofs is, is, is interesting. Um, yeah. So, uh, I think, I think I want to wait for the Gitcoin folks to show up maybe a different week to talk about the specific stuff that they do. Um, but I did want to talk about proof of pass, the proof of personhood passport, because it's similar. It's kind of similar to what we want to do with Aura, but for Aura, it's more like, um, so the differences with Aura is with Aura, you kind of like, um, so with the proof of personhood passport, you take it around, it is what it is, and it means different things to whoever you show it to. It can mean whatever it means, depending on what stamps you have in your passport. So that's interesting for that reason. Like it allows, allows viewers of the passport to make their own, draw their own conclusions about what it means for them. Um, but with, with Aura, it's like you collect a bunch of proofs um, about a person that you're researching Actually, you don't really collect them. It's more like you already know them, um, and then you make you make your your assessment of about whether this person is um, is uh, is honest or not, or whether they're civil attacking the system. And then, um, if you have enough, uh, like if your aura, if you're being verified by enough um, aura players that have enough energy, then then you receive those different levels of aura verification that we we're talking about. So um, so that's like, that's different. The part that's the same is that um, aura can consume um, these types of, uh, um, so it can potentially assume or, or um, incorporate the, the types of um, stamps that you might see in a proof of person a passport. So like if you're a, if you're a Gitcoin user in good standing, you could potentially share that with um, with your Aura verifier, and then Aura verifiers could share that with other Aura verifiers, and they can do it in a way that um, is privacy preserving. So that's a nice thing about Aura is you don't have to rely on a, a central registry or um, even a like even a uh, like a it's not even really a passport. It's not like an, a, a book with a bunch of stamps in it. It's more like on a case-by-case -case basis um, you share with the person that's verifying you. Um, and, it's, and it's gonna be things that, they're, that they already know actually. So it's not really sharing with them. It's more like, you know, I already know that Philip is this, is this um, using this Gitcoin account. And I've looked at his account and I've used the, the tools that Gitcoin has allowed 
or a players to look at to know that this is that this Gitcoin account that he's using is not involved in any civil attacks. Um, so that's helpful for the Aura, the Aura game. And then I can share that potentially. I can share my findings in um, in a privacy preserving kind of anonymous way with other Aura users. So I can say um, that I can say that. Um, and I wrote a post on it yesterday because it because it was on my mind. Um, but I can what I can do is I can say that in my you know from what I've seen this Gitcoin account is linked with this Bright ID account without revealing what that Bright ID account is in a way that other Aura players can look at what I'm claiming and they can agree or disagree with that also without sharing the bright idea account that they're talking about so in other words like two of us can say okay we both um think that this uh that this um gitcoin account is linked to a bright id user and they can say and and one verifier can say well i think it's linked to this bright id user the other verifier can say well i think it's linked to the same one or a different one and they can either come to an agreement or a disagreement without knowing which exactly which one the other one is talking about. Um, so that's important for privacy because otherwise you could you could get into a weird situation where um, you could you could pretend to be a ver like pretend you're an aura player, but really you're just trying to like do research on people and figure out like which bright IDs belong to which. Gitcoin accounts and which bright IDs belong to which phone numbers, et cetera. And so you could you could you could ask you could ask uh, other researchers like, hey, I you know I think this phone number belongs to this bright ID. What phone you know what bright ID do you think it belongs to? And then I tell you, and you know really they weren't doing research at all. They were just like trying to gather information about that phone number so they could put all the pieces together or something like that. So and and in, and take away people's privacy so um so yeah it's nice that we have um cryptographic tools that allow us to share the results of our research without um like outing people's privacy so and importantly even if that part some part of that breaks and someone's privacy is is linked they can still use bright id without the application knowing who they are. Right. Right. So, like, right. yeah. Someone figured out my phone number and my bread. Right. Lots of people know my bread ID. I've made thousands of connections. Any of them could go on the Explorer and find, yep, yeah, that, that, that point on the graph is, is Philip. Some people know my phone number. Some people could figure out that, hey, this phone number and this bread ID are together. And, and that's, that's, that's unfortunate. But also, there's things called phone books that do similar things. Um, and, but even if that happens, which we'll try to avoid, I can still go to some site, use my bread ID to, to, to log in there to, to prove, and they don't know which point in the graph I am. Therefore, they don't know what, they can't know what my phone number is. Right? And I think, I think we're always gonna come back to that being like, that's, that's the key. And that's, that's like the, the differentiator between bright ID and sort of anything else I've seen is that, is that it's just like look we're, we're telling you what we're, we're telling you what we're telling you and that's it full stop there, there's there's nothing there's nothing else that we're going to tell you that same website that i log into my brother they could ask for my phone number like they can ask for whatever they want but i don't have to give it to them and bright id certainly won't give it to them because bright id doesn't have it so like we can never accidentally link it because we don't have it yeah, that's really important, and that's the fallback. Because even though we 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 want to protect Aura researchers from accidentally revealing things that they don't want to reveal about the people that they're researching, um, because ideally, an Aura researcher is someone that already knows this information. It's not like they they need to ask you like, "Hey, what's your phone number? What's your Twitter account?" They don't need to ask you anything. They already know this about you. So so, um, but but they do need a way to kind of uh, securely share notes with other researchers that doesn't accidentally reveal something to someone who didn't already know it. Um, so that's what we're going to provide in Aura. 
Um, so we're so that so that we don't make things easier for pe for for snooping people like governments or whoever might try to use Aura to to do some snooping. Um, we're not going to make it easier for them. But having said that, you're exactly right that you're not. There's no guarantees about your anonymity. Like people need to realize that they need to be careful about that. Whenever I make a connection on Bright ID, it's peer to peer. The person that I connected to now knows that that's my bright ID, and if they choose to go against my wishes and reveal that information, like tie my name to my bright ID, or or even worse, tie my phone number, or my address, things like that, to my bright ID, um, they can choose to do that. That you know that will make me unhappy, but you know that's that's uh, I can't. Uh, I can't always like I can't control what other people do once I make a connection with them. So I've even, to... even if the even if they do even if they do that, if they go on Twitter and they're like, "This is at Adam Stollard's, this is his Twitter, this is his phone number, this is his address, this is his bread ID." Okay, like that's annoying that they did that. They could have done all of those things without the bread ID anyway, and it still would have been annoying. But you can still go use your bread ID anonymously on any site that uses blind signatures because they can't, they, they don't, they don't know. Yeah. Yep, Just exactly. Super important that we make sure that that's always true. Yeah. You can use your bread at an application and the application doesn't know anything and no one can, no one can look from the outside and be like, ah, look, you know, Humpty's, Humpty's using Gitcoin and, you know, hotsingles.com because his yeah. wife does not want him using hotsingles.com Humpty it's not appropriate man you're gonna get in trouble so that's yeah that's exactly right that's like someone we don't, tell Philip that this is being recorded <laughs> <laughs> you wanna, my wife finds that she's like wait who's Philip yeah, that's you know not, that, Philip's you. that guy <laughs> he's that guy that you're like man I should not have connected with him on Bright ID <laughs> I don't know about that trusted connection anymore. <laughs> yeah, there, there's going to be, well, that's the thing. Like, you're, if you make enough connections, you're probably going to, like, connect to that person that is just, like, you know, not very careful with 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 your bright ID. So we, we try to make it difficult to accidentally do that. Like, we don't. We don't, there's no reason to be copying and pasting bright IDs around. Um, we try to uh, like add a level of um, uh, kind of uh, a, a, an, another layer to that so that you can, uh, you, you can copy something else around instead of the bright ID if you need to refer to people within the bright ID system. Um, so we always do that. Um, and yeah, we use for the Explorer, we use something called the Explorer code. So there's nowhere in the Bright ID app where it even shows you what your own Bright ID is. So we, we try to make it really hard for people to accidentally share their Bright ID with people that they don't mean to, to share the Bright ID of people that they've connected to with people that they don't mean to. But if you want to go out of your way and uh, like find out someone's Bright ID and then share it with other people, and share other information about them, you can do that. So that's that's kind of like how far your anonymity goes in Bright ID. But yes, that always keep in mind that when an app receives your Bright ID verification, they don't receive your Bright ID. So nothing that you've done with your all your peer to peer connections goes back to the app. All they get is that the verification that that uh, the Bright ID notes have given you. That's all they get. Um, cool. Um, yeah, so interesting discussion, like what ha what do you do? I mean, I've heard people discuss this on Twitter. Like, what do you do when someone outs you? <laughs> like, what do you do when someone says like, oh, like I've detected that Adam's been using these five Ethereum addresses. And also, yeah, here's his, here's his, uh, like, um, home address. If you want to go like rob him. And here's, you know, here's his phone number if you want to harass him and stuff like that. So like, what do you do? I, I've heard people like come up with different strategies. 
of like how to like plausibly plausibly obscure your information when it gets leaked like that. Um, but it's kind of, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of a risk of being human is that someone could reveal that stuff about you. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think we can actually fix that, fix that problem. Yeah, I think some of the approaches were like, oh, no problem. Just, um, you know, make a bunch of, use some, use your other fake Twitter accounts and make a bunch of other like reveals and just do that. Like, you know, once or twice a year or whatever the appropriate interval is, just do it, just do a fake reveal um, saying like, oh, here, you know, here's a bunch of information about Adam. That way the person who's like, tr like actually trying to tra uh, track you down will see that there's like a hundred different messages and they won't know which one is like really revealing you. So there, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know like if anyone would actually go to that trouble of doing that. I think most people are just like, whatever, like people, people can find out my address if they really want or, to. Or it seems like you might have to do that like proactively before someone does yeah, it you have to do it proactively. Otherwise you should, like the, the strategy is just go look for the first yep so start doing it now start making a bunch of like fake reveal tweets that tag you from other accounts that are like hey here's adam's home address and then just put some fake address in there i don't know some of you maybe adam have read crisis 2038 which is a really interesting book uh uh, about about UBI and 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 civils, um, but so this is set in the year 2038. But like one of the things is so, so they've got this this massive system that figures out like who all the people are, uh, and it's really really good. And the few people that have successfully beat this thing started early, so they they mm, they imagined yeah. that it was coming, so they started building the accounts. These, they started building up fake people before the system came. And that was a much better strategy, like really hard to start once it was up and running. Just like you know, we've said, we've said about Bright ID. If if in a future world everybody has Bright ID and like that's just the ex, the expectation, super hard to, to, to get in. Because like if you tell someone, oh, I like I need to make my first few connections, it's like, why? Why didn't your parents do it? Like, why didn't that happen in yeah. elementary school? You know, what? So uh, right now, it's totally normal for someone to be like, I don't have any Fred ID connections. Can I start with you? And the answer is, yeah, sure. Um, way harder when everyone has it. Yeah, and I used to be worried about stuff like that. I'm like, well, what if you, what if you planned ahead and you created like fake accounts for you and all your kids and uh, and then like you told them about it, you're like, hey, I created three accounts for you, and here they are. Um, I used to worry about that. I mean, eventually, all it takes is is the kids to be like, mom, dad, that's dishonest. Like, no, I'm not going to use these accounts. And then it like stops the whole thing. You you can't like, but it, but if you keep it going, you could you could do things like you could be like, okay, now I have three accounts, and when when I have kids, I'm going to use my three accounts to like ha make three new accounts for each of my kids and and you you can do weird stuff like that but i actually think that with um with aura the way that aura is panning out i don't think even that stuff is possible like i don't i don't think that there's ways to 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 plan ahead and defeat aura like it's right. just like aura is just too good like i i have a i have a lot of faith in it um and i think that it's going to quickly it's it's going to quickly shut down like any sort of attack like that where it's like oh I'm going to collude with my neighbor or my mom or something and we're going to work together to make some fake accounts at, no I think it's going to shut shut all of that down pretty quickly so um, do thing, yeah does anyone have questions cuz I yeah, have some actually yeah go oh, ahead sorry no, please. I guess less of a question and more, well, a kind of a question uh, or suggestion is, um, sounds like there are some conversations ongoing between uh, Bright ID and Gitcoin. And, you know, one of the, it sounds like there was a conversation earlier this week, which actually Disruption Joe tagged me uh, with, but uh, I was under the weather, so I didn't really do anything. 
<laughs> that day I was just laid out. Um, but, um, you know, glad to be here. Uh, was really excited to kind of hear that discussion continue here. Uh, excited to hear it some other day since it didn't happen today. But um, reason why I bring all this up is, as you know, uh, and Philip, uh, I know you joined the uh, Crypto Sapiens uh, Discord already. Adam, I don't think you have, but you seem to be interested initially in the, uh, uh, you know, the discussions that we could potentially have more publicly on Twitter spaces um, about, you know, digital identity and reputation as well. Uh, and kind of just everything that follows, I guess, digital identity, uh, even talking about ENS to some degree, uh, soulbound NFTs, because I know that's kind of some of the discussions we've had in the past. Um, and now with like proof of personhood and, you know, even kind of the collaboration between uh, Bright ID and, uh, and, and Gitcoin, I think, I, I don't know what you think, but I really think that this would be a nice um, kickoff discussion on Wednesday. Um, I've shared in that channel sure. that uh, we could be having this, this uh, it seems like the availability for most of those who uh, contributed their availability is on Wednesdays, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time or Pacific Daylight Time, whatever, uh, Pacific Time um, on a weekly basis. So it'll be a recurring uh, recorded event. So there'll be that archive there on Twitter spaces uh, that's good for a month. Uh, our team would then uh, take these to YouTube so that we can archive them even further or longer. Um, I think that they, this could be a really good discussion to kick it off with. So if you don't, wouldn't mind jumping in there as well, Adam, uh, and sharing your thoughts. And I know Disruption Joe's in there and he was already kind of thinking along nice. these lines. So yeah, I think this would be fun to talk about on Wednesday. Yeah, if he's available, um, yeah, we should go ahead and do that rather than scheduling a, a part two AMA and trying to get get coin folks over there. Let's just bring them over to Crypto Sapiens and have the conversation there. I like that suggestion. Cool. Sounds good. Sorry to kind of interrupt. No, you, that's but good. I, I that uh, a... Yeah, no, that's, that's really good. That's really good. Yeah, I definitely want to do that. Um, so, yeah, I was going to say something about um, about uh, like developments in 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 Aura, but I can't remember what I was going to say. But um, but yeah, I'm I'm really I was talking about how I'm just really I'm really bullish on the idea of Aura. I think it took us a while to land on that, but I think it it just really makes sense that you have. You have this um, you have this decentralized group of people who are working to fight against civils. You force all the civil attackers to play in their playground with the with the expert civil hunters, and um, you just have the people who are focused on it and thinking about it and working working on it use that set of tools. I think that that's the winning strategy for the, for um, creating like a worldwide system of uniqueness verification. Um, it also makes it a lot easier um, as far as like, just from a computational standpoint, if the honesty graph is just using this subset of people that are uh, like the civil, civil detection experts rather than the entire world population trying to crunch that graph. And you also don't have to try to train and educate the entire world's population on how to like detect civils, which was kind of the original strategy going into Bright ID. Um, so I do think that that I, I think that um, I hope that Aura is is kind of the winning strategy. I don't see much else that can rival that yet. I I mean I think that the it's got such an advantage over things like trying to create like a federated government system or something like that. Um, because like I was saying, you um, researchers can share all this information with each other in a decentralized way that doesn't reveal too much information. Whereas, you know, if it's like, let's say it's Canada and the United States sharing information about their citizens. It's like, I don't, I don't even think that they need to tell us what they're doing. I think they can just do it. And, and who knows what they're doing? Who knows if they're doing it right? Who knows if, you know, who knows what they're sharing? They're probably collecting way more data than they need to. Um, it feels like a surveillance state rather than if you're using your, um, you know, people who already know you to help verify you, that doesn't feel like a surveillance situation. It's like, 
well, you already know my email address. Whereas like if I have to go down to the passport agency and tell someone I don't know my email address, that definitely has a different feel to it. So I really think that this is gonna be the system that people um, accept and uh, that will be the be like provide the best outcome for people. And I think it, I think it works. I think it can be at least as effective as like a federated government's solution, which is the only other like solution that seems to be even possible, but even it, like it doesn't seem as possible as something like Aura. So, um, so yeah, I'm really excited about it. I, I think that it's taken us a while to figure out that that's what we need, but I think it's a really good solution. And I think that people will not have any problem using it. I think some of the other solutions that we're seeing crop, crop up have like come with some concerns, um, mostly privacy concerns um, for the for the users. Um, like WorldCoin, pretty scary that it's closed source. It's collecting your biometric data. I think that's that just doesn't seem cool. So, um, yeah. Any any other thoughts on that topic? Oh yeah, Humpty's raising his hand. Go for it, Humpty. Thank you, Adam. Uh, I did have a question in terms of Aura. So I'm still trying to wrap my hand, head, wow, excuse me, trying to wrap my head around uh, Aura. And I think I, for the for the most part, I think I have a good overview. Um, but I'm also trying to understand the kind of where it is right now in development and in terms of collaboration, because I know we've chatted before. In fact, we have a thread open uh, right now with um, Yaz on, you know, potentially getting some grants uh, to co-develop something with Ontology. So my question is in terms of Aura and knowing kind of some of the different products that uh, we've built there, uh, or even potentially with Orange with Reputation, like what are your thoughts in terms of like how, uh, or what you would like to see personally, in terms of the collaborations uh, with Aura that will kind of add more value to, you know, the application, but also to the people that are using it? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think that um, Aura is, uh, a lot of is, a lot of it is about collecting evidence about um, people that you're researching. Um, and there's kind of, I, I, I divide the civil attacks um, that are possible within the Aura verification system into into two different types. One is um, this type that Bright ID has always struggled with, and I think Aura is going to be a great solution for this. Um, Bright ID has always struggled with this. Well, I'll just make a second Bright ID, and I'll just go to a different set of people and get it verified. And I think I think Aura is going to be perfect uh, for solving that. Um, I think it's um, it's going to allow uh, researchers to leverage what they already know about a person to like just shut down those attacks um, pretty easily. Um, so there's that. And to, but to be able to help with that, what you want is you want to be able to um, be able to leverage all the things that you already know about someone. And um, so if like we brought up Gitcoin, if I know someone's a Gitcoin user, that's another piece of information that I can bring in. Um, if I know someone's phone number, if I know their address, all these um, bits of information that I already know, I don't need to ask the person what they are. I already know them, but I can securely kind of like compare notes, securely and privately compare notes with other Aura researchers to make sure that, yep, the same guy using the same account, same Bright ID account is, yeah, is linked to this information that that we both already know. We're not revealing anything new to each other. Um, and we're not revealing the bright ID just in case. Um, we're just saying that, yep, we agree on the same bright ID. So more points of data. Um, so like, you know, if, uh, if um, any other protocols have, have done other research on a person and that becomes uh, not necessarily even public knowledge, but just like friend type knowledge, so if, if, uh, if there's like some other social apps that come up that allow me to keep track of things about my friends, 
um, then those can be leveraged into Aura. So there's potential for that type of integration. Then the other type of Sybil attack is um, I talked about how the Aura game forces Sybil attackers to come into the game where all of the like expert Sybil defenders are. Um, and the reason it does that is because of the other type of Sybil attack. So the other type of Sybil attack is kind of like, I just start creating Sybils. I don't even try to pass them off as me. I just say like, okay, yeah, I've got, I've got friends. I'm not going to tell anyone who these friends are, but because I have, I have some clout in Aura and I'm an Aura player, people have given me energy. I'm allowed to verify people. I'm just going to like keep a few Sybils over here just for me. No one really knows who they are. Um, I, I hope no one asks about them. I hope people just let them slide. And I'm just going to like try to keep them hidden over here. Um, that's the other type of attack that you can do. And so we're going to need lots of, um, lots of uh, um, technology and um, resources to um, analyze the graph to find trouble spots like that. And, um, and so, you know, this is where machine learning is going to come into play. This is where uh, other um, sorts of graph tools, analysis tools, alerting tools um, are going to come into play. So there's definitely room for collaboration there of how can, how can we best analyze this graph and, and uh, you know, find areas of concern. And if there, is, if there are concerning areas, um, Aura has a very quick and effective way to address them, which is Aura players can um, give less energy to, the, to, to those areas. So if I see a troublesome region, I can instantly cut off the energy that I'm flowing to that region, and that will diminish the uh, ability of that region to verify accounts. Um, so it's a very, it has a very quick effect, um, but we do need to uncover those regions as they happen. So I'm, you know, I'm imagining things like you have a graph view that shows you over time. Like if there's a region that I want to highlight, I can see how it's evolved over time. So if I see troubling patterns, like, you know, every, you know, like every day at, at 12 AM, like a new account pops up in this region. And it's been doing that for like the past three months or so. You know, we, just weird things like that, that just don't seem right. Um, or like there's the obvious one um, when you're doing graph analysis that this, er, this region is just not, you know, it's very isolated and it stays that way. Like, and you can see it over time because a, a region of humans, it might start out isolated, but eventually start to get more um, links back to the, to the rest of the graph, but you see a region that starts out isolated and stays isolated or only grows within itself, um, things like that. So if you, can, if you can analyze the graph over time and kind of present that. Um, so all sorts, of, all sorts of ways to like visualize data, to um, analyze data, uh, there's, there's definitely room for lots of collaboration there. Um, and, yeah, so I see it as being kind of this open source toolbox where hopefully people will find the value in Aura and keep contributing new tools to it to make it better, to make it like a toolbox. It's like a bunch of different tools that you can use. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, if you can think of any um, any groups that are knowledgeable in those areas. I mean, those are those are places to collaborate. Awesome, thank you. I'll, I'll uh, bug Yaz uh, <laughs> in our group DM uh, and talk about that. But thank you so much for all your thoughtful responses. I gotta jump off, but this has been an amazing discussion as always. Thank you so much for leading it. Yeah, thanks for being here. Yeah, I look forward to our call on Wednesday. Um, cool, well, thanks everybody. Um, Thanks for talking about um, passports and aura. Um, yeah, I hope I hope we'll be able to share more updates soon. Um, I'm really looking forward to an aura call where we get to like unveil aura and say like, here's the here's the tool that is now in beta. Right now it's a closed beta, but I would love to. I'm looking forward to the time when we get to announce that and kind of open it up to more people to use. So. Um, 
yeah, thanks for joining. Thanks for the discussion. And we'll see you, see you all back on our Discord and in other places. So take care.